Bill Burr had some things to say about socialism and capitalism on his podcast here. There's a couple clips that we will play uh, back to back, but let's get to this. This is some pretty fun stuff. Uh, socialism. Hi, Bill, you redheaded fuck. <laughs> I really appreciate the bluntness of that. How, how are you? Um, last week you mentioned uh, you don't know why people demonize socialism. Um, I was really taken aback at that statement. Oh, Jesus Christ. Every country that has tried socialism has failed, and it's responsible for tens of millions of deaths. All right, so would you say capitalism is working? It is, it is not, uh, you know, when like, what is it, like 99% of the wealth is in like fucking 2% of the people's hands? All of these tent cities, you're telling me this is working? You don't think capitalism is responsible for tens of millions of deaths? Um, anyway, Russia, Germany, China, Cuba, and most recently Venezuela have tried or right now are socialist countries. Um, as far as I know, whatever Cuba was trying to do, we prevented them from doing with a fucking embargo or whatever the hell we did. We've been fucking with them for 60 years. So I think you're looking at like, you know, like what a lot of people do is you look at your own country through rose-colored glasses the same way you look at your own sports team like oh my team doesn't cheat but your team does all right that's part one i thought that was pretty well said you know he echoed the exact i wrote a whole article about this after um those amazon workers were killed in their warehouse after being forced to stay on the job while the tornado warnings were going off in the area and that happened just, I forget, that was probably almost a year ago now. Um, but I wrote a little piece saying, hey, um, why don't we start counting deaths under capitalism the way we count deaths under communism? Every person who starved to death under Joseph Stalin was tallied as a death under communism. So are those warehouse workers deaths under capitalism? What about the 50,000 Americans who died every year until uh, because they could not afford medicine. And then after the ACA was passed, that number was reduced by about half. Excellent work. Only 20, 25,000 people in the richest country on earth now die every year because they cannot afford medicine. Forever, however well, many well, years that's that, been going that, on, that, that, as that, long as you've been a country, that's a lot of thing. deaths under capitalism right there, too. You can add those to the list. Right. Sorry. Sorry. What were you, well, you going to say? No, that there's that incremental change we hear so much about. You know? Yeah, exactly. Eventually we get to 5000 and that's good. The, well, the, well, this is why. And this is this is really brainwashing. It shows you how brainwashed people are and how effective that brainwashing is. Deaths under communism. Yes, we blame it on the communist system. Deaths under capitalism. We blame on the people who die under capitalism. We, we put the blame on them. They did something wrong. They were irresponsible with their lives. They didn't manage their lives properly. Right. That that had nothing to do with capitalism. That has to do with you. You had all the tools you needed to have a thriving, successful life. But because of flaws in your character, you wound up dead. You wound up in a bad situation. It's not the system. It's you. The system is perfect. And so these deaths don't count as deaths of capitalism. They're human tragedies. They're forces of nature very often. Oh, this town was wiped out. Well, uh, you know, economically, well, that's globalism. You know, there's nothing we can do about it. They're building cheaper in China. You know, there's nothing. That's 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 a force of nature that has nothing to do with the system we have. You know, Germany. For some reason, they're able to write trade deals that don't destroy entire sections of Germany. But we just we can't do that has nothing to do with the fact that we let the corporations write our trade bills. No, no, it's just it's just these forces of of global economics are forcing our hand. There's nothing we can do about it. And it it was Clinton really perfected that line. He really perfected that. Yes, I wish we could do something about it, and we are going to do something about it. We're going to we're going to retrain you for the jobs of the future, which never can. Right, exactly. Capitalism defers responsibility to the individual, and that's it's out because right. oh right. well, it's not capitalism. So all we're doing is freeing you to go as far as you can go, and if you can't go as far as to be able to afford medicine, well, that's because you're a fuck up. 
And if that costs you your life, too bad. That's not on us. That's on you. And that yeah. is how they weasel out of this. So Burr Become went on. Become a Nietzschean Superman or die! Right, exactly, exactly. Uh, all right, Burr went on here. Let's like because he gets even into even some, uh, I think, much much uh, uh, more profound yeah. points in this next clip. You're really sort of looking the other way with what capitalism has done to other countries. Um, all the sweatshop labor, all the wars we fought in over air quote freedom, where most of it is about you know natural resources all of these fucking countries where we've gone in and you know stuck in heads of the government that are going to do what we want to do so we can fucking take advantage of them like i mean to sit there and look at capitalism like like it's you know i don't know dude all right i took off my bergen stocks i'm going to read read the rest of this here okay <laughs> socialism all starts the same way create a boogeyman like corporations the rich or a race Oh, yeah, we've never done that in the, this country. We've never created a boogeyman. <laughs> we, yeah, there's never, I mean, Jesus Christ, buddy. Blame them for all your problems. Yeah, we never did that. The leaders then promised to fix all the problems. Oh, boy. Slowly, the government starts to control every aspect of your life. Why does this sound so familiar? Promise that every, I mean, aren't they like recording all our phone conversations now? Uh, we're slowly on our way to getting microchipped. Uh, promise that everybody will have the same e equity and outcome. This creates mediocrity, loss of the middle class. Loss of the middle class? Where have I seen that before? Uh, of innovation, uh, punish, you know, corporations are buying houses now. They're just buying them up so they can fucking Airbnb. Like, literally the American dream, buying a house. They're going to take that away in this country. Uh, that reduces the tax money coming out into the government. Buddy, I can't fucking read all of this horse shit. This is everything that we're doing, too. <laughs> that point about corporations buying up houses was a very, very strong point to bring up in that context. Because right. what you're seeing now is an economy go to shit, but housing prices are remaining through the fucking roof. Mm -hmm. That's because corporations, which are hoarding most of the wealth in this country, are doing exactly what he's saying. They're buying up houses and they're renting them out. That is a feature and a function of capitalism. That is what capitalism allows for. Capitalism, it's in the word capital. Capital. You gain advantage in capitalism by accruing capital and using the capital you already have to gain further advantage, i.e. more capital. And right. so the more capital you gain, the easier it is to turn that existing capital into, into even more, more capital. capital. Uh, and, house, and that's house. why these corporations are able to buy up these houses. And the people with not enough capital to buy a house are then forced to rent the house from the corporation who owns the capital exactly. and bought the house. And under capitalism, there is no way to stop that because capital is a snowball under capitalism. The more it gets, the bigger it gets, the more powerful it is, the faster it rolls, rolls down the hill. You cannot stop it. The way you stop it is for government to step in and make a rule. Excuse me. No, no, no. Corporations, you cannot buy as many houses as you want and rent them out to the paupers. No, you cannot do that. But that is not an example of capitalism with rules. That's like the fucking Liz Warren thing and the moderate Democrat thing. Well, we need capitalism, but we need rules. Capitalism with rules is not capitalism. What you are describing in that case is a regulated market. And almost everybody who thinks they are defending capitalism, what they are actually defending are regulated markets. Regulated markets are not unique to capitalism. Regulated markets existed long before capitalism, and they will exist long after capitalism. Regulated markets are perfectly compatible with socialism. And so people are very, very confused about this because, yeah, we need capitalism, but we need certain checks on it. Capitalism has no checks on it. Capitalism means... The unlimited accumulation of capital, and the more you gain, the easier it is to get even more. Anybody who's ever been broke and then come into money, they will tell you, I haven't come into money yet, but anybody, ask anybody. It's a lot easier to make your hundred thousandth yeah. dollar than it is to make your hundredth dollar. 
Sure. Well, Try increasing uh, your net worth from $100 to $1,000. It's way, way tougher than it is to increase your net worth from $99,000 to $100,000. Why? Because when you're going for that $100,000, you got ninety nine grand worth right. of capital to help right. you earn it. Right. And that's what capitalism is. And under that system, there is nothing stopping corporations uh, from buying up all the houses made... in the country and turning this into what many would would assume from 30,000 feet is a communist country where the state has all the power and everybody else lives in dirt. Love for pizza. What's wrong is the corporate capture of government so that it only works for corporations and the 1%. This means that both political parties work against workers. Well, yes, that's true. But once again, I would just highlight the corporate capture of government is inevitable under capitalism. Well, because under Marx capitalism, said. everything can be bought, which means everything is for sale, including political power. And so if you don't put guardrails on that, then uh, you will inevitably, under capitalism, have corporate capture of government. The way to stop that from happening is to come together as a people and decide we are going to pass certain rules, i.e. laws. But those laws do not, um, r do not usher in a sort of like utopian version of capitalism where everybody treats everybody fairly and gets along and works to each other's betterment because there are rules. No, what those rules represent are what I said before, regulated markets. And you can have regulated markets under socialism just like you can have them under capitalism. But when you talk about What's wrong with capitalism is that we've let the corporations run wild. Well, that that is a feature of capitalism. Right. Under it, capitalism, it, it, corporations must Marx be able to argued, run wild. That it's going right. to end there. That it ultimate, can't not. By definition, it capitalism, can't. the final stage of capitalism, according to Marx, was that they're going to eat the treasury. That the last thing they're going to get is the money that the government has. Right, because what's Eventually, stopping them? Eventually, they're going to take that, too. And what's stopping them? That's what you have to ask. Well, that's where right? we are now. That's, right. where, that's where we are. They looted the treasury. Please clap.